Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and today we're going to go and take a look back at my Formula 1 2021 grid predictions. A prediction video on who could possibly be on the grid in 2021. And now that Hamilton has finally signed his contract, we have a full grid available to look at. So let's see how far off my predictions were and honestly, some of them were quite outlandish so... This is probably going to be a very messed up list and I don't really remember it. I'm going to be watching it back for the first time since last year. So with that said, let's sit back, relax and let's begin. At what could potentially be the 2021 Formula 1 grid lining up in Melbourne? I didn't even get that right. This is going to be a disaster. Now starting at the back of the grid, Williams, and I don't think George Russell will stay beyond two seasons. This is probably the biggest disappointment on the list. George Russell is ready to step up into a top Formula 1 team. Unfortunately, the opportunity has been denied to him by Lewis Hamilton signing a contract with Mercedes and no seat being available for him. I'm mostly pissed off that Mercedes signed Valtteri Bottas on for another year because George Russell would be excellent in his seat and present more of a challenge to Lewis Hamilton. As it is, he has another year at the back with Williams. Hopefully this year he can score some points. So they will need a replacement and I think it will be the time Dan Tictum finally takes centre stage. I don't know what I was thinking. Dan Tictum. He's not even that good. He's won a couple of Macau Grand Prix, but he's never won any championships of any kind. He took a win in Formula 2 last year, but he is a midfield runner. He was a Williams developmental driver. He will probably be again in 2021. But when a seat was available last year, they still called up Jack Aitken instead, who also hasn't got a great record in Formula 2. Dan Tixon is probably never going to race in Formula 1. If they had to find another driver now, if it wasn't Jack Aitken, I don't know who it would be. Probably Roy Nassani, which is pretty sad. He will partner Nicholas Latifi, who I think will do well enough to earn a second year of the team. Well, Latifi's still there, so it's as strong a partnership at Williams as you would expect. Kevin Magnussen will be kept at Haas. No, he won't. He has a lot of unrealised potential and that will be enough to stay on with the team. But the best decision they made was keeping old hand Romain Grosjean on for another season. And I think they'll sign him up again for 2021. I'm kind of sad to see Magnussen and Grosjean go. They've never really had the careers they were supposed to have. But they're probably happy to leave a Haas team that is pretty much in free fall. That being said, the drivers they've brought in, Mick Schumacher is an exciting talent. He is the Formula 2 champion. And obviously, with his Ferrari connections, you can expect to see his career grow as long as he can, you know, cope with the pressures of Formula 1. As for Nikita Mazapan, I don't have strong opinions of him. I definitely didn't predict him to be on a Formula 1 grid anytime soon. But apparently he has the money, so he's going to be the interesting one to watch, really, because I have no idea how well he's going to do. Alpha Tori are a strange beast. Always taking Red Bull's scraps and trying to turn them into fine cuisine. I think 2020 will be the end of the line for Daniel Kvyat. It'll be his sixth season at this level, and I don't see him being given a seventh. Probably the first big change that I got correct. I did predict that Daniel Kvyat would be leaving AlphaTauri after 2020. I did not predict that Yuki Tsunoda would be replacing him. He had a great first season in Formula 2. I thought he'd still be a bit too young, but he's got the super license points required and he looks very, very good. He is going to put pressure on Pierre Gasly to perform. I believe Pierre Gasly will remain as they have invested a lot into the young man and he seems to excel with this team. Now, this one is out there, but I think Alexander Albon will be back with this team. I don't see him challenging for wins, maybe on the edge of the podium, but he will be far behind Max Verstappen in 2020 and get relegated back to Alpha Tori. I mean, Pierre Gasly is a race winner, but apparently he has beef with Helmut Marko, which may mean his seat at Red Bull isn't safe. I don't know. As for Alexander Albon, we'll discuss him more later when we get to the Red Bull seat. 
but I am shocked that it was never even really brought up that Alexander Albon could go back to Alpha Tori. They seemed pretty set on having Yuki Tsunoda. So it's a shame that Albon will be missing out in 2021, but that's what happens when you don't perform. I expect a full lineup change for Alfa Romeo in 2021. Do you now? Kimi Raikkonen will finally and happily stroll off into the sunset. Raikkonen will never retire. He's going to start, what, his 20th season in Formula 1? That's insane. He is going to be racing well into his 80s. And Antonio Giovinazzi will be gone because he is not very good. Uh, in Giovinazzi's defence, he did get better. So maybe him and Raikkonen deserve to be there another season. It's just a bit of a stale lineup, is all. I halfway expect Robert Kubica to replace Giovinazzi in 2020 if performances don't improve. I don't know why I keep thinking Robert Kubica will get Formula 1 drives. He struggled in DTM last year. It was nice to see Kubica back with Williams for that one year, but it did prove that he hasn't really got it anymore. I don't think he can compete at a level in Formula 1 that would be considered satisfactory to any of the manufacturers on the grid. So I think Kubitz's time has sadly come and gone. I think he'll be joined by 2020 Formula 2 champion Mick Schumacher. You know, I predicted that Mick Schumacher would win the Formula 2 championship back in February 2020. I deserve some respect. I didn't predict that he'd go to Haas. I predicted Alfa Romeo, but that doesn't matter. He's on the grid. I got like two out of three right. Aston Martin are probably the easiest to guess because they will probably be exactly the same despite a name change. Well, this aged badly. I honestly did not expect Sergio Perez to ever leave the Force India racing point Aston Martin fold. He has been so successful for them. He had his best ever season last year. They would have to be insane to replace him, even with a four-time world champion available. I think Vettel is a huge gamble for Aston Martin. His form over the last few years has not been great. Last year was terrible. He comes with four world championships. He was a winning driver for so many years. But his best was a long time ago. And Perez just seems to be getting better and better with age. This its a huge gamble. It could pay off. But I think they should have stuck with Perez. And I don't get any points for predicting Lance Stroll would be at a team owned by Lawrence Stroll. So, all in all, this is probably one of the worst predictions on the whole video so far. McLaren make it three in a row for not changing their driver lineup. I don't know why I was so sure that no teams were going to sign anybody different for 2021. Why would they? Carlos Sainz exceeded all expectations on his way to sixth in the overall standings in 2019. So... Carlos Sainz has left McLaren for Ferrari and instead they have Daniel Ricciardo who is a former race winner and he had a pretty damn good season with Renault last year, especially towards the end of the year. I think it's a sideways switch. They're not really getting someone better than Carlos Sainz. They're not getting someone worse. Daniel Ricciardo is a great driver, as is Carlos Sainz. So it'll be interesting to see how he does with McLaren, who I think have the potential to be podium chasers at least. Probably not race winners. Lando Norris also had some good performances in his first season. He was unlucky at times, but has so much more improving to do. And considering how impressive he has been, he could be a future star. I still think Lando Norris is a great driver. He had a good year last year. Again, some bad luck. But I still stick by him being a future star. And I think he'll do well with McLaren in 2021. Red Bull will do everything they can to keep Max Verstappen in their cars for as long as possible and he is already under contract for 2021. No points for guessing this one. I think you'd have to drag Max Verstappen from the cold dead hands of Christian Horner if you wanted to get your hands on him right now. I don't know if he'll stay with Red Bull forever, especially if they're not winning championships, but they'll do everything they can to keep him. As for his teammate, well, as I said earlier, I think Albon will be relegated to Alpha Tori to make way for someone else. I shockingly and madly believe we could see Fernando Alonso in a Red Bull seat for 2021. Now hear me out. Albon won't improve much in 2020 and harshly will be relegated. Alonso has already said he wants a top team to welcome him back to Formula 1, so who better than Red Bull? Okay, so I have two points to bring up about Fernando Alonso. One, no idea why I predicted he'd go to Red Bull. They never showed any interest in him. He didn't necessarily show any interest in Red Bull. And he's going to be at Renault. That's important. Not Renault, it's Alpine. 
for some reason, I was checking back this video and I appear to have left out Renault. I don't know how it happened, but I predicted Ricardo and Ocon to stay. Obviously, Ricardo left. This is all kind of part of the switch around with Science and Vettel switching over all over the place. So, yeah, so my predictions for Renault were wrong anyway, but they didn't even make it into the video. Again, did not expect Alonso at Red Bull after I made this video anyway. I don't know what I was thinking. But Sergio Perez replacing Albon. Very harsh on Albon. I think he deserved more of a chance than he got. He was showing signs of improvement towards the end of the year. But it's just, again, a sign of what happens if you don't perform. They will replace you. And Perez is such a good driver. He had no space on the grid. It's shocking that Red Bull signed him. But I think it's a good choice for them. I think he'll push Verstappen. I think Verstappen can learn from Perez as well. It'll be an interesting year to see how they gel as a partnership and how well Perez can do at Red Bull. Alonso at Alpine. It's going to be interesting to see if he can sort of get back up to speed quickly. Ocon, this is his last chance if he doesn't perform. Renault have a lot of young drivers like Christian Lungard, Guan Yu Zhou. There's probably a few others in junior formula. They will replace him if he doesn't do well enough. So he'll get the Albon treatment. I don't know how long Alonso is planning to stay around if they're not competitive. So yeah, there you go. That's your two for one. That's your Red Bull and Renault. It all wrapped in one. Do I think Lewis Hamilton will be in a Ferrari for 2021? No, of course not. The Pope has more chance of winning Olympic gold. I had completely forgotten about all those stupid rumours linking Lewis Hamilton with Ferrari. It makes no sense for him to join. And after the year they had last year, it makes even less sense in hindsight. It was just a contract negotiation tactic. It obviously didn't work because Hamilton's contract negotiations dragged on for months. Charles Leclerc will still be there though. Already signed a contract and Ferrari's golden boy, hopefully, they will have a car to do him justice by then. Charles Leclerc looks decent and will do a good job in 2021. So who will be his teammate? Honestly, probably Sebastian Vettel. I don't see anyone else who could possibly have a Formula 1 drive for Ferrari in 2021. For their sakes, I hope he says yes. Yeah, they're probably glad to be rid of Sebastian Vettel at this point. And Carlos Sainz is a very good signing. My worry is they have two young, hungry, competitive drivers. Is that going to cause chaos? Possibly. But I think Ferrari do need to do something different. And I think Carlos Sainz is a move in the right direction. Mercedes will have Lewis Hamilton for 2021. It doesn't make sense for them to split ways, but Hamilton teasing a Ferrari move will probably make him the richest Formula 1 driver in history, and Mercedes will happily pay. I think it was obvious that Lewis Hamilton was going to sign at some point. It may be controversial that it's only a one-year deal, but I think he could be there as long as he wants. If he has to concede a few things to get that, that's on him. I don't know how long he's going to be left in the sport, He's probably going to be champion again in 2021 anyway. I, there's not anything more he can accomplish, so I don't know why he's sticking around. I guess he gets paid for it. I do expect Valtteri Bottas to quietly disappear from the sport after 2020. He won't win the championship, will very quietly not have his contract renewed another year, and will be replaced by Mercedes employee and current Williams driver, George Russell. As I said, this was the biggest disappointment on the list. I really thought Bottas was done. He's just not very good. He's a competent driver who will score points for Mercedes, make it easy for them to win the Constructors, and will happily finish second. That's it. He's got another year of that in 2021. And, again, he'll probably slip out at the end of the year to be replaced by George Russell. So disappointed for George Russell. He proved at Bahrain that he was ready Mercedes should have given him that chance. It may have cost them money if they had to pay Williams something. They may have had to pay Bottas off, which I don't think they did because I think he's only under a one-year contract extension anyway. But they should have done it because it's more disappointing for Formula 1 in general that George Russell is not in that Mercedes seat. Campos. Now, this is just a slim possibility. Nothing has been announced in terms of new teams being introduced to Formula 1, but Adrian Campos has announced his intentions and it's backed by the Spanish government, so just in case it does happen... Well, sadly, there was no new teams announced for 2021, and Adrian Campos is dead, so... Do you agree? 
do you disagree? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Whilst you are down there, please subscribe. I want to hit 30 subscribers by the time Formula 1 starts. And time is running short with that. That was my reactions to the 2021 predictions Formula 1 grid video. I filmed that around about a year ago. At the time, I had less than 30 subscribers. I now have 200. It's been an incredible year. And I'm looking forward to another incredible year of motorsport. So please subscribe if you haven't. Stick around for all the motorsport videos. Later on this week, I am going to do a Formula 1 Grid 2022 predictions video. So we'll see if I can do any better in that one. So stick around, leave a comment, leave a like, share the video, whatever you want. Thank you for watching and have a good one.